Hi there, in this video we're going to look at the Urus of Gambit, which appears on the board after the moves e4, e5, bishop to c4, knight to f6, and white's d4 move. So in fact, except for uh, d4, white has uh, lots of other opportunities, of course, after bishop to c4 and knight f6, the game may enter uh, different opening lines, different uh, setups, and uh, indeed, uh, there are many interesting opportunities for white, like the Vienna game and so on. But d4 is indeed a very interesting option. So after that, e5 is under pressure. So black has uh, several options here. I would say that uh, they should be connected somehow with the protection of the e5 or capturing d4 or taking the pawn on e4. Uh, let's start with the knight captures e4. It's probably the least promising option for black because after white's natural d captures e5, we may notice that uh, white managed to grab some space already because of this pawn on e5. But the main problem uh, is that both the f7 and the knight on e4 are quite vulnerable at the moment and it's hard to find a good defense against uh, either bishop takes f7 or queen to d5. For example, after bishop to c5, counter-attacking and exerting pressure on f2, white may choose between queen to d5 or just a simple bishop captures f7 and after king f7, simple queen to d5, regaining the missing material. For example, king goes away somewhere and queen captures e4. So already here, uh, white has extra material and I don't see a sufficient compensation for black. Let's get back to the initial position of the gambit. So here, if we consider something protecting the e5 pawn, this will mean that black is uh, basically uh, giving up the initiative and uh, white will uh, have a good center. So I believe that the best move for black is simply to capture on d4. And here comes the gambit. So instead of uh, recapturing that, uh, white should play knight to f3. Uh, because something like e5 here will not quite work, although it looks very promising, but black has a typical counter-attacking d5 move, attacking the bishop. The main point being that if uh, white captures on f6, black just captures on c4, and black is having an amazing center here and pair of bishops already uh, and something like this, which may look like a uh, damaging of the pawn structure on the king's side. doesn't really matter in such a situation. Position is open, pair of bishops decides. So I would say black is already better in this case. So uh, let's get back to this position. Um, anything else like bishop b5 check is not really dangerous because black has a uh, knight after d7 and black has very solid situation in the center c6 is coming and then e5 may be in danger uh, finally if uh, something like queen d4 happens in this position then black may respond with a knight to c6 attacking the queen and after something like bishop to b5 it's possible to occupy central position on e4 preparing very annoying bishop to c5 attacking the queen and then the pawn on f2 as well uh, knight is pinned, so black cannot take the queen, but it's not necessary in this case. So e5 doesn't work, that's why uh, white usually tries to play knight to f3, uh, leaving the pawn uh, on d4, but trying to grab the initiative because of the better development. So let's try to understand what may happen if black captures another pawn on e4. Uh, it looks like a possible continuation. Why? Because, well, d7, d5 is coming, so in case white tries to attack the knight from e2 position, uh, then black will just respond with the d5. It looks absolutely fine. So instead of doing that, white usually captures on d4 with a queen, attacking the knight and preventing d5. So as you can see, uh, white controls d5 square. So now uh, black has a choice, uh, and it's not necessarily very pleasant, I would say because already here white has an amazing development and is ready to castle, for example. So something like queen e7 shouldn't work at all, just castling them rook e1, very dangerous. So black uh, should go away with the knights to either f6 or c5. Let's start with the knight to c5 move. At very first glance, it looks uh, very logical 
because since black doesn't have uh, sufficiently uh, developed uh, his keen side, the problem with f7 pawn uh, is critical and knight c5 uh, tries to solve this problem with the help of knight to e6 move. So e6 is uh, not necessarily the best position for the knight, but still it is a central one, so at first glance makes sense. The problem is here uh, that uh, the queen on d8 has uh, not so much space and the queen on d4 is very active attacking g7 so white may try bishop to g5 move so here we can see that if bishop goes to e7 then g7 drops so black is literally forced to play f6 in this position and then bishop steps back to e3 so also active position and now the diagonal a2 g8 is completely weak which means black cannot castle short in the nearest future and even if uh, he or she does uh, there will be a problem like constant problem with that diagonal because of the light square bishop of white so here black may try to solve that problem with the help of a c6 move preparing d7 d5 but white just uh, ignores that keeps on developing pieces for example d5 and now very important pattern so white just castles and as we may notice queen is hanging so uh, Black cannot take the bishop. Bishop e7 solves that problem, but then queen jumps to h4, and now we can see a real problem coming. So it would be nice to castle now, but white is ready to sacrifice the knight on d5 and to use the power of the light squared bishop. So castling may be just fatal. But the problem is even bigger here. So if black continues with the knight to d7, which looks very solid at the moment because bishop is kind of hanging and so on. Uh, white may continue with this sacrifice anyway. And after c captures d5 and say queen to h5 check, the queen gets to d5 with the great efficiency. So let's say g6, queen takes d5, creating a threat of a checkmate already. Uh, black may protect the f7 square with the help of say rook to f8, but in that case, it's possible to consider either taking on c5 already here or maybe just preparing it with the rook to e1. So uh, black has an extra minor piece here, but black's pieces are not coordinated. Everything is uh, completely paralyzed. So knight to c5 doesn't look very promising. Let's have a look what happens if black simply steps back to f6. So right after queen to d4, knight goes back to normal position on f6. And once again, we can see that black is ready to play d5. So it's logical for white to continue with a knight to c3 move, uh, controlling uh, d5 square and preventing that move. And after black's natural knight to c6, queen goes to h4. So here is the point. Uh, white is a pawn down, but the development is much better. Uh, position is open now as you may notice white has e and d file uh, at his or her disposal and once uh, the development is complete and rooks get to d1 and e1 there will be an annoying pressure uh, on black's position so uh, black has several problems here first of all it's important to complete the development of the king side but the queen side is also sleeping at the moment so uh, we can see that uh, white definitely has a compensation for missing material Let's say bishop goes to e7, bishop goes to g5, and uh, well, if you castle here with black, for example, there may be something connected with the bishop d3 in the nearest future. Another option is to try d5 here. Uh, after that, white should castle. And after bishop to e6, feels like black is just all right. But white continues with the centralization, and as I said before, it's already super annoying. For example, h6 looks like a normal move, but then bishop captures on f6, bishop captures on f6, and white has this queen to h5 move. So the threat is simple, rook captures on e6, d5 is already hanging, so if black castles then after knight to d5, it's not so clear where to put the queen, it's a really annoying situation. Uh, in the game we are following at the moment, black decided to capture on c3, but it didn't really help. Rook captured on e6 first, king is forced somewhere, for example to f8, then rook captured on d5. 
Here we can see that white is simply dominating the field. There is no even a material advantage for black anymore. And the problem is even bigger because after queen to c8, white has a nice combination based on the fact that f7 pawn is abandoned. So now, for example, if black recaptures on c6, there is this rook to d8. So now f7 is under attack and this means white immediately wins. So in the game, black decided to try to avoid it by playing g6, but it didn't help because white simply captured this pawn with the rook. And after f takes g6 and queen takes g6, we may notice that the king is completely exposed. So no surprises, the game quickly finished with a direct attack and a checkmate after rook to f5, king to e7, queen to e6, king d8, and rook to d5. So everything looks pretty impressive and interesting. The question is if black has a way to avoid the complications of the Urus of Gambit. And yes, this possibility exists. So let's have a look at this. So here, right after white's knight to f3 move, uh, I believe black should avoid capturing the pawn on e4, entering the main lines of the Gambit. Instead, preferring knight to c6 move, uh, which means we have a transposition to one of these scotch uh, gambit lines and so this is perfectly fine for black for example after e5 and d5 a typical response uh, black is doing well so we have already discussed the type of the position which arises after e captures f6 and d5 takes c4 so normally white responds with the bishop b5 being in the knight where after black has two equally good continuations the main line is knight to e4 and another one which I prefer is knight to d7. So uh, black is uh, having very solid situation in the center, uh, attacking e5 and is ready to uh, complete the development of the king's side. That's basically it about the Urs of Gambit. I hope it was interesting and helpful. Thanks for watching and see you next videos.